the most hardest thing I ever had to deal with was being stripped down butt naked by another man, telling me to grab my balls and to squat down, and then have that done to me like multiple times repeatedly. The greatest American alive. I know on discharge, I had to do that like four times in the same day. And I'm like, man, I'll never, ever. Like the over-sexualization of the black body, no one even talks about that. To be degraded by another man, man, I've never felt so low, so degraded. That shit was demoralizing. It's still traumatic to this day. I'm fucked up. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fried out. That, that's like story of my motherfucking life. But it made me who the man I am today. So, you know, I got through that. But the reason you have to look at why they do that, though, before you get your haircut, you take all your motherfucking clothes off. They wash you take a shower and they do all this stuff, your shoes and take all your shit. Right. All right. And they take your identity and give you a number. With all with all my heart right now, I'm trying to hold back these tears. They took my soul when they broke me down. butt naked It's 50 other men. I'm standing shoulder to shoulder and you strip me down butt naked like a damn fucking animal. It hurt my heart, man. I didn't know how to respond. I don't know how to respond. And to know that that system exists right now, I need to understand something. This is the question that I want to ask right now, right? Is when you confine me, when you give me a sentence, you have to dictate, you have to tell me exactly what I'm being sentenced to. Is this, is my incarceration, does that mean that I have five years without having physical contact with my family? Because that's a punishment within itself, right? Are you telling me that I have five years of hard labor? Because that's a punishment within itself, right? Are you telling me that I have five five years of limited communication? I need the terms of my incarceration to be spelled out so I know exactly what my human rights are. Am I asking for too much? They give you a list of things. Do you read them? Mm, probably not. I read that handbook from front to back, man. Every piece of paper they oh, gave me. Oh, you talking me, about the handbook? I'm talking about in court. I'm talking about every piece of paper they gave me. I, I, up, down, left, right. I had nothing but time to read these documents. But did you read the undertones? I'm not a lawyer, so I couldn't understand the legalese. Yeah, we many of us can't. Do you know if you don't agree to the court-appointed lawyer that you talk directly to the district attorney? Do you understand what could be done with that type of power? No, I don't. If you talk straight to the district attorney and not the public defender, it causes the district attorney to have to do the work. Okay. Instead of just sit down and prolong everything, because one, one is just it's just creating static in the system. You're putting pressure on the system. You're going to make these people do their jobs. I know me personally. I mean, that's fair. I sat there for seven months. All they do is come hand me a reset. Seven that's months. That's fair, though. They said seven years TDC. You're getting paid. You're a public figure. Do your job. That is fair. In order to even have this conversation, honestly, we have to, the American people have to have some type of empathy or compassion with the human people that are incarcerated. And before you even get to that place, because before I entered the system, I had this idea in my mind that said, these are felons, these are criminals, and they deserve what's happening to them. Why? And because it was programmed in my brain. Good guys, bad guys. Those are the bad guys. They broke the rules. And Where so they come they from? Broke the rules. Cowboy Indian? No, nah, I came from school. You know, walk in a straight line, put your finger over your mouth obey when the bell rings get up grab your books and go to the next place man indoctrination nation they program me to follow the rules and anyone else who does not follow the rules please tell on them and then we got black lives matter that that type of political rhetoric right there uh whenever you're getting ready to go to war i'm not going to follow behind a weak person who i'm not if you're not a warrior i'm not following you to war i'm sorry i don't i don't care what your identity is what your ethnicity is if you are not a warrior and i mean god dang like actually served your country trained in war if you're not ready for battle i'm not following you nowhere because political speech requires action those people were not about that action you're asking me to put my life on the line for your pretty thoughts or your nasty thoughts and I, I don't subscribe to that ideology. So was Gandhi a warrior? Gandhi. Do I believe that Gandhi was a warrior? He was a lawyer, and so he understood how to navigate the system. Exactly. That's a different type of power. And we have to create that balance. See, it wasn't no the, the, the MLK. You know I got to bring the MLK and the X in. You got to talk about that. Now, it was depicted as if they were against each other, but the balance, the polarity of the whole situation, you had one that was the angry black man, then you had the other guy supposed to have been the puppet or the more righteous leader because he believed in and peaceful just, protest. Just to put it in context, when we started this, I said that the most degrading thing, the most dehumanizing thing I ever experienced was to be stripped down butt naked by other men in front of other men, to be, to be dehumanized. That took something away from me. Malcolm X firmly understood what that meant what that process is and the same anger that I have inside of my heart to know that this system exists. He knew that system on an intimate level. Me doing that 
for the uh, prison. That wasn't the first time that was done to me. The, on the first day that I went to uh, the military, on the first day of basic training, they put 50 men inside of a, a restroom with three stalls, shoulder to shoulder, and said, strip down and put your clothes on. Well, hold on, though. Hold yes, on. Sir. You said the military. Yes, sir. You said the military, right? Yes, sir. Now, when you leave the military for whatever you serve, Yes. You go through medical. Yes. You go through social services and stuff like that, and they give you what you need. They process you out. Yes, sir. When you get out of prison, you go to social services. I'm with you. And they're supposed to give you what you need. You're supposed to. Now, both of these situations, right. polarity. One's supposed to be good, one's supposed to be bad. It's the exact same system. Exactly. So somebody knew if I was took from society and stripped of my identity and played these mind games on, they knew that something was going to happen to my mental state. And by you knowing that something's going to happen to my mental state, you put something in play that's supposed to pamper that. Now, you have different support systems. When I come in and say, hey, man, I'm a felon. Or I say, hey, man, I serve this nation. Don't say I serve this nation and I'm a felon because now you got uppity people just like religious folk that religiously believe what they believe about the military or what they believe about being a felon, the jail system. And they're going to put their perspective on you, not seeing the undertone that these people knew that something was going to happen to your mental state. And they didn't tell you that before you entered the ring. If you want to control any society. You control the men and they've been controlling us with indoctrination first, with incarceration second. Like they have us so programmed in America to be good citizens that we we will operate against our best interests. Men in America right now are operating against their best interests. They are fully invested in a system that has no legal writing to protect my man, my rights as a man. Women have legal writing to protect them as women. Hell, black people have legal writing to protect them as black people. Hell, there are people who have legal writing. Uh, for their sexuality, but to protect my rights as a full man, there's nothing in writing that says that I have the autonomy to be a free living person. Nothing. Actually, there is writing on the contrary that says if I procreate with the person that they have the right to own my body for 18 years. Own it. Own it. You don't get in. Well, some people get paid for it in different states. We're not going to talk about that, Texas, but this is the life we live. So what it, what we need to do, though, like what what need to be done? If you are any type of slave, if you are a debt slave, if you are incarcerated physically, you have to get free. You have to acknowledge the fact that you're being held against your will right now. Men in America who are paying child support, you have to acknowledge your autonomy as a free person. No one has the right to dictate your labor to you. And they're taking your physical labor away from you and giving it and transferring your wealth to another situation. Any man in America will say, but that's your child. All right, then allow me to raise my child however I see fit. Well, your child gets gets government benefits. Hey, that's my child, right? So by law, you should be negotiating with me on what services come to this child. I'm big on details. Yes, sir. I'm big on details. So many of y'all out there, and this, this is how I got this. I saw this. You need to check this out. So if you're on child support, you have back child support, whatever it may be, whatever your situation is, I don't know how to fix your situation. But the details on your credit, it shows that you have a loan from child support. Now, if you have a loan from child support, then where the money at? I'm curious. We have a false document right there. So child support has a false document saying that it's a loan versus an agreement. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a professional. Most of the heroes of our time, when you talk about Gandhi, Martin Luther King, these were these were professionals. Fidel Castro, he was professional. He's a lawyer by trade. Yes. Che Guevara was a doctor by trade. I'm just a common average working man. And so my tools to destroy a system is blunt force trauma. I'll withdraw my energy from it. I'll stand up against it. If every man in America said, I'm not going to participate in this system any longer that, that makes me a debt slave to my own child, I renounce this debt. You can have it, discharge it, whatever you want to do to it. All hell going to break loose. Hello. All hell going to break loose. You hear me? Liberation. Well, that's part of it. Liber liberate the American man. Every feminist in America, you should be for me also because you believe in equality. You believe that you and I are the same. And so since you believe that... You want your body, your choice. Allow me to have my body and my choice. Allow me to be able to pick and choose who I want to have a family with. If I want to participate in that family or not, that's full autonomy. Everything that you want as a feminist, I want as a male feminist also. Come and show me some love, baby. We, we best friends. We, 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 we partners in this revolution. You understand? I don't know if you crossed this path or not, but when in my situation, my child support, my spouse or however you want to call it, my counterpartner, when she found out how much I was paying, she was like, well, what, 
you paid that. I'm like, yeah, I, I paid that. She was like, well, why don't get that much? Because it goes to the state. Exactly. They're profiting off our dysfunction. So we can't have a functional relationship. And so the money that's supposed to be going to us building for our child is going to the state. And for some reason, your anger and your vitriol towards me wants you to make that system stand up. We could do so much more if we actually work together in partnership and in agreement instead of having lawyers and politicians in our lives. Well, let's take it a step further, though, yes, sir. because now you have a lien against your name. And if you have a lien against your name, then they're going to you're going to get hit with a lawsuit. OK. Right. All right. Now, you don't never pay that lawsuit. The insurance or whatever is backing this lien is going to end up going to a treasury. Okay. Where is that? You got to be blunt, bro. These people are profiting off of black bodies. Hold on, excuse me. These people are profiting off of the male body. When when you tell the me... Black body, that's totally different. <laughs> so that's two different situations. We're talking about the, the male the body. The male body. They are profiting off of the male body right now. Listen, you tell me that if I don't pay this debt that you say that I owe, you're going to put me in jail. So you're actually making money for me to be in jail or else why else would you put me there? Twice. You ain't you ain't doing it for punishment, you understand? Twice. <laughs> you didn't get paid double time. And I still owe the money. And then you can't support the kid. Hey, right now, this is not whining. This is strategic planning. We're going to stop the system that's trying to stop us from being full human beings. Emancipation freed the slaves, and we need the legislation to free American men from these debts that you're hanging around our necks. Please, I can't breathe. I'm trying to be I'm trying to be a fully functioning member of this society, and you telling me that I owe money that it don't even exist. It's just a it's a figment of your imagination. You want me to take care of my children? I tell you what, man. Every government program, it, you have to have a two parent household to participate. And if you are not a two parent household, then you get a reduced rate. You get a reduced rate. How about that? How about that? How about for all the benefits that go for the child? If it's in the best interest of the child, you split those benefits on both families. How about that? How about programs? That t cognitive intervention programs that bring you from your tr your therapy. I mean, your your trauma bring you from your trauma. What about programs that put you through therapy to teach you how to build on your reality, not the white picket fence. Okay. Build on your reality and what's going on to help you mentally to understand we have to accept each other's reality and stop trying to live like the Joneses and everybody else, Pookie and Leroy and, and Jubilee and all them people and understand what Raheem need to do for my Raheem situation. But those are real programs. Cognitive intervention is it's, real. Mental health is real. It's very unfortunate. But when you start bringing professionals in, because we do have a class system in America. And so since they make $70,000 a year, when they come work with children who come from families that make less than $30,000 a year, their idea of what's good for them is based on their reference point looking down on them. You little nigga boy. Oh, you little po child. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you got a dream. You from the hood. You got a dream, boy. You better sell some dope. Hey, HCC, you want to go to Texas A&M? It's right problem. down the street. I'm trying to tell you. I'm Are just... you a black guy and you got on some hoochie daddy shorts? <laughs> come on, man. You from the hood with the hoochie daddy shorts? and a... Come on, you play chess? Nah, but... y'all don't do that. That's why you having problems. So when we start bringing in other people with other ideas to fix our problems, it don't look so good. It don't look so good. You said something very beautiful, man. I want to start where I'm at. And right now, I'm a soldier on this ground for my children. I'm fighting in real time on a frontline war to protect my children. Not only they, they thoughts, they emotional and mental well-being and they physical well-being. That's my job as a father. And I'm asking for every father in America who's being castrated through legislation to stand up and say that I'm going to raise my children however I see fit. If you want to have any type of service in my child's life, you have to come and negotiate with me. When dads stand up and give each other the emotional and mental support to do this work, then you can't stop it. You can't stop it. And when women and when you see these wonderful dads who's engaged in their children's lives and having a positive impact. Don't be jealous. Get excited. Get with it. <laughs> get, get excited. This is what it is, but we don't have that environment or that energy that says, hey, let's support let's support daddy and what he got going on. But daddy has to support the kids and the women and what they got going on. But a lot of times it's split between the two. Forget that. Daddy don't need to have nothing going on. Mama got it going on. The kid got it going on. But the daddy got it going on to itself and nobody else. To itself and nobody else, man. It's nobody and, and and that's a space. That's a personal space. Isolation. That's a personal space because you pouring into the family, you pouring into different situations, and you might not be home with them. That doesn't mean you're not pouring into the situation because you're doing 
what you can do or what they allow you to do in their life. But the environment that they've been in or the environment that they created, it pushes the father out, pushes him away. So what does he do when when people push you away? Natural, quite naturally, push me away. That's it. All right. Go on about your business. But you can't do that with your kids. You can't do that with your kids' mother, even though we want to. My favorite question right now to my ex-wife is, how may I be of service? Like That's the biggest question. How may I be of service? Use your words to tell me what I can do to not only benefit your life, but to benefit my children's life. Articulate that to me. And then whatever you ask of me, I'm going to try to go above and beyond because I really want you to be okay. And I commend you on that. I commend you. For sure, man. Because we just, that's what's going on. And it's so rare. I appreciate that. It's so rare that it has to be celebrated. Right. Oh, and I celebrate the strong women that's been taking care of the household, even though the friction and the static is there, that the father's not there. And that whatever the reality was, we didn't get it right. I'm sorry. But those that's trying to fix it by any means necessary need to be commended. Please forgive me. Everybody's situation different. Man, I was learning. You hear me? And then when people on the outside looking in, they're going to have all the old stuff to say. Right. All the old stuff. Like, you girl, you remember when he did? A girl, boy, you remember when she did that? None of that matters in the present moment, man. We need to fix this shit right now. He took my daughter to school this morning. Wow. Now what? What's up? Come all, on, man. All, all those things you just said? Hey, hey, hey. He took my daughter to school this morning. Huh? <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> to be excited about embracing the role as a father in America. And this duty is so much bigger than what the government tried to take away from you. We can rebuild our families just with better ideas, okay? And if anybody wants to try to uh, intervene in between me building a relationship with my children, let's do it. However you want to do it, I will meet or exceed your energy. I'm not playing no more. We don't have the luxury to play anymore. We have all these conversations about who done what. I know what I didn't do. My bad. I'm coming for what's mine. Forget, fuck a pat on the back. A push. Like, man, I see you over there doing your best. My best is to put myself in place of service to help. To help. To lift up. To empower. They deserve it. Of course they do. Raheem, you deserve it. You deserve it. <laughs> hey, for we, we project daddies for real. For, for like, real. Like we are work in progress. Man, that's a project. You hear me? Like our communication, if I'm frustrated and it's petty, he gonna laugh at me. I'm like, oh man, I'm some bullshit. <laughs> but it's honest though. Like, man, why you worried about that for? Because sometimes daddies be petty too. I mean, we got feelings too. <laughs> I mean, we talk about controlling feelings and this and that, but... It get real in the situation and that self-talk is important. And if you can't talk yourself, you got to have somebody around you that's genuine that'll give you the real and make you laugh about it. it. It may be entertaining, but at the same time, it's serious and it switches your mind state because just having a genuine friend can change the whole chemistry of your brain, whole chemistry of your body. And then you start making things. Man, they say when you go different places or experience different things, it unlocks something in your DNA. It unlocks something in your DNA. So having certain friends and being around certain people and being in certain environments, being in the project unlocks certain things. But then when you step outside the projects and go to other places where you got support and systems of uh, different things that people have accomplished and watching other people and you create this environment around you, it unlocks something in your DNA. So when we get to the point of having a family that fits our reality and everybody is prospering, it's going to unlock something in your DNA, women. I need some of you suburban fathers to come have a seat in the projects and let's have a conversation on how we improve the quality of life. I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a work in progress, right? I'm a work in progress. I don't know everything. I don't. We don't know everything. I'm learning. And right now, if you can comment and let us know what's going on and give us some advice, we would love that. And we'll pass on what we pass on and go on about our merry day. We're going to work on this thing together, man. I appreciate this wonderful conversation. Uh, men need to support men. And that's the only way that we can really engage in this ideological war that's going on right now. It's time to have better conversations. It's time to be more creative and have some imagination. The greatest American live. I thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Raheem. Uh, Project Daddy. <laughs> the greatest American alive. You are the greatest American alive. 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 The greatest American alive.